So I am all about the sacred missions and expeditions, obviously. So I am taking you through a virtual tour through the temples of Egypt. Yep, this is a very, very short journey for you to feel the energy and the frequency of what it is to be a starseed grid keeper and understand yourself as that because essentially everyone is a grid keeper. And what I mean by that is the urge, the pull, the calling to go to certain places that hold very, very potent power. And it may be that it's a cave and it may be that you just, you know, love hiking. There's a reason for that because we're so connected to Mother Earth and we're so connected to the land that our being um, needs this kind of interaction and activation. So let's go a little bit deeper into that. You know, the power of sacred travel. Why bother? Why not just stay at home, read your spiritual books and just do your thing? Thing. That can be an option, but you're a powerful starseed warrior or warrioress. You came here to do big things. You came here to mission. And this is why sacred travel is extremely important, not just for you to um, restore uh, back into the earth that which you agreed upon that you would do, but also for your own process. If you want to really um, exponentially skyrocket rocket your process and you really want to deep dive and expand at a rate of knocks, knots and move a lot faster, sacred travel is for you. The power of visiting Egypt, which is what I'm going to get into now, the Tablets of Light, Tablets of Light tour. That was several years of journeying backwards and forwards to Egypt and actually seeing the massive changes and transformation in my own being of just going back and forth to the temples. Now, it's not just Egypt I've been to. I've been all over the world to different places, but Egypt is my epicenter. And I know for a lot of you, it is as well. So when you grid keep, okay, essentially what is going on is you are a powerful portal. You are just like the Great Pyramid. You have the ability to receive and transmit, okay? Now, we forget that just by us being that is enough we don't have to do anything because we're constantly having a conversation with with the consciousness with spirit with source and we're constantly having a conversation with Gaia so we have this 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 exchange which is going all the time even walking through a mall you are emanating your frequency and you are you know sending out receiving sending out receiving so that is how powerful you really are now imagine putting yourself in the temples now imagine that download from source coming through you into the temples and you activate that temple once more but the temple also sends you codes which you've left there in the temples to activate your being you send you codes to unlock your blueprint which is your ta your tablet of light within to unlock those encodements and then you access more gifts and abilities and you expand it's a, it's a win-win everyone's happy you know you're receiving and transmitting all the time so each footprint you lay on the earth you are sending what i call a golden footprint activation which i think is very very powerful because you are electric Electricity, you are frequency, you are you are just vibrating all the time. So when you have that understanding of exactly how your system works, then you understand the power of grid keeping, then you understand why you're getting a big deep pull to Egypt or other places. So your Earth Star Chakra which is the chakra that is about a, um, a little way before, below the feet, about that far in the earth, okay? That is your gateway to the Gaia portal, all right? But it's the chakra that sits below your feet in the earth, okay? So it's a little bit like deeper into your energy field. That chakra has been downloaded with all of your coordinates of your mission, okay? Which is why you get called to these places because your earth star chakra is going off that way and you're going, oh, where are we going? And it's taking you because it agreed, you agreed that you would visit certain places at certain times in your mission okay to activate unlock because you need those codes you need those gifts and abilities and your earth star chakra has all of that information so essentially we just need to chill out because everything comes in divine timing and your system your being your your chakra system your higher self knows ex your soul knows exactly where you're going and why and at what time so i want to just bring on your radar the power of sacred travel and when you go to the temples essentially is a deep dive. It is a big deep dive, what I call a big mission for a big vision. Now, there's many of you out there that hold these big visions just like me. And there's many out there that you're hearing the calling to go to Egypt. And I hear in this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly why that is so important. You will receive codes and information because I'm going to go through a couple of the temples that we'll be going to and why they are deeply significant and how they work when you unlock the temple magic in your being. So, 
let it all settle, get comfortable, and then we shall move on. Temple magic. This is what it's all about. So temple magic. Temples hold so much magic and medicine. And first of all, I want to just explain why temples are still standing. They stood the test of time for years and years and years and years. They have still maintained their structures for very, very good reason, because at this this particular timeline, as we're all ascending and stepping into the fullness of who we are and we're coming into union, they needed to stay standing to remind us of what it is to have a very, very sacred structure to vibrate in sacred codes, to be connected to as above, so below, and so on and so on. How do you feel when you walk into a temple? You feel connected to source, you feel peaceful, you feel a certain vibration, it's all good, right? That is what temples kind of emanate, but what it's there to remind you is that that is indeed a mirror, you are the temple. This is, as Yeshua says, the kingdom of heaven is is within you, because you, beautiful you, are the beloved in the twin flame you've been searching for. This is the love affair, this is the true connection to source. So that is really the magic of temples. There is a certain mission that we are on when we work with the with the with the tablets of light tour okay because each each part of the land the desert the the temples the nile the stars you know we work with all of that medicine and we activate the frequency of each temple within your being so you can unlock that superpower so for example let's talk about the great pyramid great place to start that's a receiver and transmitter it is also like a med bed it has the ability to upgrade your being upgrade your physical so it's in its highest vibration so you are well it's also a portal it's a time machine it's all of the above right many initiations went on there that you were part of and that particular medicine um basically is within you also on how to bring a physical manifestation idea build it and they will come build it so it can stand the test of time what's your legacy the great pyramid will teach you so much about that and how to access and move forward in your in your mission just by connecting with that medicine so you see each temple holds their own specific frequency they have different things to offer you and different things to activate within you so each temple is actually a tablet of light so that is how that is how the temples wish to assist you in upgrading and remembering that technology that you hold within you so you can embody so you can self realize so you can become do you know what i mean so there is a whole medicine process that these powerful places can bring you especially the nile the nile is all about rebirth so as we deep dive into the nile it has the magic and the the healing abilities to wash away the past to connect you with the water spirits to there's so many things that the nile can give you because it's a huge portal in itself it is the reflection of the milky way as above so below and of course when we go to the, on the on the tour when we go to egypt you know we have a purification ceremony within the water for that reason so so each temple, each place is strategically placed on the experience so that when you're going through your um, process of becoming, each temple comes in at the right time. And then just as you need to wash everything away, we end up at the Nile and we wash and we cleanse and we receive and we just come into that real uh, power of the water codes, which is all to do with the heart, because that's the element of the heart. So yeah, temple magic. What's not to love? The Great Sphinx looks like I've got the most amazing headdress, doesn't it? But oh my goodness, what a powerful stone being. So much to speak of with this medicine here. This is essentially where we start our Tablets of Light experience. This is where we open the circle and we open the experience and the journey. The Sphinx is actually an earth altar. So, so what better place to start is at the altar. This powerful being, I mean, there's so much to be spoken about here because it's connected to the uh, Halls of Amenti. Anubis is the keeper of the Halls of Amenti. And so very much woven into that is Toth as well. Toth is very present when we work with the Sphinx um, because also the Akashic records are accessed um, through the Sphinx as well. Now the Sphinx is deeply connected to the Great Pyramids. So when we come here, we come at sunrise, which is beautiful because the sun just rises and it starts to hit the Great Sphinx and it just emanates golden energy. It's so, so, so powerful. So so here we unlock the eighth dimension, we unlock your uh, 
your process to acceptance of core power. The Great Sphinx is all about your mission and purpose. So this, this stone being holds all the information to that. So you can tap in. I've had long conversation with the Great Sphinx who, who comes through to me like a grandfather energy, like I'm talking to a really wise old male elder. That's for me, you know, but it may be different for you. And you can like say, look, this is where I'm at. This is where I need to get to. And then the Great Sphinx will, will work the energy through an infinity symbol. And then you have this conversation and it may not be apparent exactly what's being woven into your energy field, but later on down the line, you will start to have some very powerful synchronicities. Sometimes an hour after you've left this place, which is what happened to me a few Egypt trips ago. So this is a very, very powerful being. And when we, um, when we come to, because this is our private visit, we start here in the morning. When we come to the Sphinx, we sit in communion together and we we really journey into the into the libraries and we sort of ask, well, listen, we're here for some days. Great Sphinx, please hold the space for us. And what have you got for me? So the libraries start to unlock for you straight away. Toth turns up, Anubis turns up, the sun rises. It's very, very, it's very magical and powerful. And um, this being will definitely, definitely open the portal to your to your core power because it's all about acceptance of core power and it's connected to the number eight of course we have the infinity symbol that, that runs like that but you know if you turn it upright it's the number eight and it's connected to the eighth dimension and uh and and the akeru brothers which are two white lions that guard this portal i love this being so much because it's been an integral part of me uh unlocking my libraries actually because this is where the libraries uh, the libraries live um, so yeah, so this stone being is very, very dear to my heart. And you know what? You can connect with the Sphinx. You don't have to be there in physicality. Obviously, it's way more powerful, but you know, you can work with the Sphinx with what I've just shared with you and unlock your path now. Why wait? The Great Pyramid, my most favorite, favorite place. Now we've just gone through the Sphinx and we've started our journey and we've, we've witnessed sunrise. I mean, what more magic do you want to start on such an epic, powerful transformational journey in Egypt? continuing our grid keeping ways sunset on the same day yes marie thought she'd go big or go home having two private visits on one day <laughs> opening up with the great sphinx and of course sunset we then are moving into this very powerful place now there's a million chambers in here but three that we get access to are is the one the subterranean chamber that goes deep into the earth the queen's chamber which is like halfway up the king's chamber which is very famous for the sarcophagus because that's where we had many initiations yeshua's had initiations there's so many ascended masters have have lay in that sacred tomb in that top chamber three ceremonies in in um in two hours and it sounds like you have a lot of time there but not really you have to really humble to get things done but it is so very powerful the great pyramid receiver and transmitter as are you the great pyramid a portal as are you it's a time machine so you, that's what what the initiations were for from the, the king's chamber you would lie in that sarcophagus and you know you would go through your initiation where they put the lid on and then you would learn how to drop the body and travel into the ethers ascension because you would have dropped the body and died but that's the whole thing going through death and then rebirth, resurrection, and then, but you would learn how to come back into the physical body and then you would reunite again. That was one of the initiations there that, that we've all had. We all know how to do that, which is why we are perfecting our understanding and connection with the death and rebirth process. Um, and as I've spoken about before, it's also um, a, a powerful medicine to show you, to remind you that when you are um, wanting to bring something through into a physical manifestation, you know, the foundation must be strong, just like the Great Pyramid. It needs Needs to stand the test of time and of course as above so below as above it's a receiver and transmitter so below so it has that that deep uh, uh powerful message of what it is to be in alignment otherwise if it's off it's not going to work you know so the great pyramid i mean again as i say when we go in there so many people have different experiences as to what more medicine it brings so the great pyramid an absolute epically powerful experience on a private visit, one that you will never, ever forget for the rest of your life. I mean, out of all the temples, which are magical and amazing, this one is definitely takes the biscuit, as they say. So yeah, the Great Pyramid, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we all know I can't do an Egypt share without my mama, Sekhmet. I mean, she is just a force. Massive, integral 
uh, component to our ascension right now because I know that many of you connect with me through Sekhmet because we're all Sekhmet sisters and brothers. We're all family. And she is like whip us, whipping us all up and kind of saying, come on now. You know what I mean? Find your fires, find your courage, find your warrioress or your warrior, you know? So she's a, a massive integral part of our uh, ascension process right now because it really is facing your shadow. You know, when we visit Sekhmet, she is at Temple Karnak. And I mean, we we know that she is a formidable force, but she helps you kind of run on from the great uh, from the from the great Sphinx. Actually, she's a formidable force in, in you finding your your courage to step in and to stand up and you know proclaim your your roar to the sun, which is proclaiming your power, finding your voice, speaking your truth. When we when we visit her. We visit her humbly because, I mean, you know, you you don't just barge it into Sekhmet's chamber. Let me tell you, I've been witness to that a few times. And you can feel that beautiful, big, sacred statue that she is stands in her chamber. We all know that famous picture. And you can actually feel in her energy and emotions, truth, you can feel when she's happy and when she's not happy. Strange things happen in that chamber. It's very, very supernatural. Cameras will just like wipe out of battery. I have been in a nighttime temple visit before and I've stood against the wall and I can feel the wall moving. It has been said that she locks the doors to her temple on her own. There's all sorts of magic things that have happened there. And my most recent visit there was like, probably one of the most powerful um, and she did indeed lock the temp temples behind us the temple doors behind us and you know each di visit is different not to say that it's going to be the same next time we go but it's like there is always something ridiculously magically powerful that happens and she always knows I'm coming and she always knows who I'm bringing when we go and visit her you know you go in one up you know we don't go in as a group because your your interaction with Sekhmet must be one-on-one -on -one. you know I will hold space at the door but at the end of the day it must be honored that you turn up to be received by the mother one-on-one -on -one. but she knows you're coming and even before I know who's coming on the tour she knows you're coming and this is what blows my mind blows my heart actually so every time I meet with her I expect nothing because she's 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 the one that basically writes the story so yeah um, Sekhmet's temple is small tucked at the side and the outskirts of Karnak She's popped out the back there because a lot of people fear her. I mean, back in the day, you know, Sekhmet was the one who kind of really, you know, she was she's the 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 goddess of war, you know, but she's also the goddess of healing. She's the also the goddess of alchemy and transformation. So, you know, Sekhmet's calling her children home, which she did to me. I brought my myself home, and now others come. So, if you're feeling that that deep pull, it's because she's calling you, and that needs to be honoured in whichever way you uh, you feel is correct for you, you know. So. So Sekhmet, Lady of the Flame, Lady of the Fire, there is nothing else to say except. So this is Temple Isis. One of the temples that we visit, which is energetically, strategically placed in a certain part of the tour, this is Temple Philae. Okay, I took this picture. Look how still that water is. This is the Nile. And her temple sits on an island and it is probably one of the most feminine, divine, magical temples because it's just surrounded by bird life. And when and we come here, we come here and we watch the sun rise. We watch Ra rise and we receive the sun codes. You know, it's absolutely incredible. And if I can point out now, I have to get the setting right. You know, we, we walk through, if you see here, if you were in the courtyard over, we walk through her Holy of Holies. So the top of the temple is always the most holiest part of the temple. Only the Pharaoh and the high priest would go back in the day um, and it would be here. Now we obviously enter there because that's the Holy of Holies where the um, where the altar is. So this is the last official temple in the tour but then we go into the most holiest part and most um, special part of Cairo to go and work with the um, energies of the um, of the sacred churches which is where Jesus and Mary and Joseph um, hid in a crypt underneath the churches. So that takes us into more of the hit scenes energies. But as far as our temple magic tablet of light activation mission, this is the last temple that we come into, which is a private visit. Again, we get this beautiful temple for two whole hours to ourselves. We dance, we bang our drums, we sing, we do whatever we like, you know, because it's all in honor celebration of the completion of all your temples because I mean let's face it like any mission any pilgrimage comes with its challenges so you're going to be going through transformation expanding 
healing, journeying, all of the above. And then we arrive at Isis's temple and we're all dressed in white and we're all kind of like, you know, suited and booted. And then we come into her altar space. Each one of you, including myself, stands up at the altar and you proclaim your promise to the goddess. And it is like an anchoring of all of the experiences, all the energies and frequencies that you've experienced from the Tablets of Light temple um, journey. Okay, you anchor it here. I have given many promises here in all my visits to Egypt and I always end up here. And every single promise I have given, if I look back on it now, I think, wow, I lived by it and it was delivered to me. So even though it's a promise, it's also a, a, a call for manifestation, bringing all of this ether magic into physical form. And of course, after the Tablets of Light Tour, I work with you individually or in, in small groups and we start to unpack your experience to bring in the Heka. What was the idea? What was the vision? What does it look like in the world? So we don't just stop at Egypt. We carry on going after we've toured. And that is where the magic is at. But here is almost like the crescendo, what I call the balloon pop moment. And it's a celebration and it's been arduous and it's been amazing and it's been challenging and it's been brilliant. It's been a lot of tears, it's been a lot of laughter. And we get here as a group and it's just like, oh, celebration day. We get excited talking about it, you know? And Isis is waiting for you. Oh, she is waiting for you to receive the promise, which is essentially an offering. It's a gift. So this is Temple Filet always done early in the morning and there will always be a beautiful sunrise so you know this is this is a very very magical special place and you will experience it and you will receive it and then we will sit hand in hand and i'll say you see i told you <laughs> So there you have it. You have experienced just a few of the temples, which were essentially the private visits, but there's lots of temples in between of which you'll be, you know, um, expanding on that temple magic, activating the medicine within you. So much transformation, so much change, which is why I've decided to, to kind of like round off the end of this experience with these two beautiful goddesses, Sekhmet and Hathor. If I can equate the journey back to oneness and I had to pick two goddesses, it would be these two. But when you walk the journey of Sekhmet, harnessing and embodying your power which is taming the sacred fires and you now are righteous rage not destructive rage that is really harnessing your your fires and then you come to Hathor now complete heart embodiment you kind of come into this energy of oneness and that is why I thought I'd use these two goddesses because this is kind of what it's like after you've completed the tablets of light tour because once you walk through that process you know I talk about Heka a lot Heka is Egyptian magic and magic and medicine it is it is the the energetic flow of being as a Above, so below in perfect alignment you are um, wholesome you are anew and this is what the hecker is all about being in that oneness wisdom heart of one but living a physical experience so what does that look like in your life you know it's not about us going to live in the temples in Egypt even though that would be nice we are the temple so how do we emanate and and embody all of this temple magic and put it into our everyday lives well now you start to live the life you've always wanted you now have full access to all of these gifts and abilities you never knew you had and they start to unlock and they start to show up in in your life those business ideas or just ideas in general start to come online you effort so much less so you're not sat there vibrating in disempowerment you now know and once you know you can't unknow i mean i run my hecker codes groups as you know but if you want to know what the tablets of light tour is truly all about it's hecker in the temples and that is the highest level that you can access that kind of magic and wisdom and then it's just a case of actually following your your guidance and actioning it from the highest potential and the highest vibration and when that happens only only good things prosperous things and abundant things will happen to you and that, and for you and that is that is my work that is my mission because through the temples and through my journey this is what i have now know to be true because this is what the tablets of light this is what the temples of egypt did for me and this is why i'm able to share this with you and this is what i want for you it's just so much magic and i just feel that everybody should have this um because it is actually already within you you've just got to acknowledge it and you've just got to realize it so thank you for coming on my little virtual tour um, to Egypt and back. Um, and yeah, and now we move into um, we move into very, very powerful times of ascension. And this is why if anyone is looking 
at Egypt and they're hear hearing that call, it's for very good reason. It's for very specific starseeds on a very specific mission, which is why I put these videos out because as soon as you feel the vibration, you're like, that's it. So now if that call is resounding, um, I gotta go to Egypt when I'm, I'm waiting for you there. I really am. And so are these gods and goddesses. So no cost Zoom call, let's get on it. Let's talk, let's chat. And let's really deep dive and get this ascension process going because there is so much magic waiting for you. And I'm so excited for you to receive that. Thank you for watching. Always, thank you for watching. Peace.